Hey everyone, it's Rhea here, and in this video, I'm going to continue the ChatGPT videos. So the last ChatGPT video, which will be linked down in the description, and I might put it on the side, we discussed how it can actually be used to solve some competitive programming questions. Now, obviously that's against the competition rules, and for the harder problems, it doesn't really work. But in this video, we're going to talk about something that does work for the harder problems, and it's going to be how we can use ChatGPT to prepare for USICO contests. So let's get into it. So let's say... We're working on this problem here, right? Platinum contest lights out. And let's say that we're stuck on it. So we might take a look at the solution. And sometimes when you look at the solution, the solution code is very complicated. So let's say I am confused about this statement here. So what I can do is I can copy it. I can go to ChatGPT. Now, ChatGPT has their newer model, 4, which is not available to everyone unless you pay for it. Um, so I'm going to use 3.5 just because that's the one that's available to everyone and you can just use it for free. And so I'm just going to say, explain this code to me. All right, it didn't really give me anything useful. It just sort of explained what the thing technically was saying. So let's try to get this, give us something more useful. So why would, or what would this code be used for? Ah, there we go. Here we got something now. So some form of geometric computation or algorithm. One possibility is this code is part of a geometric algorithm that checks the orientation of three points in a 2D plane. The code computes the cross vectors formed by the points and the sign will determine if the points are clockwise or counterclockwise with respect to each other. Okay, so if the expression is greater than zero, then the points are counterclockwise. If they're less than zero, then they are clockwise. If the expression is equal to zero, the points are collinear. So now it tells you exactly what that code snippet's doing. And you can use that when you're stuck on complicated code snippets to sort of make it tell you what the code is doing and help you out with that. Now, sometimes, obviously, you have to ask it multiple times, right? The first time I asked it to explain this code, um, when I was preparing for this video, it just explained the thing directly. Here, the first time, obviously, it gave this weird stuff, or not weird stuff, it just gave this kind of useless stuff. And then when we asked it a follow-up, it sort of gave us the correct answer. So keep asking until it gives you something useful. All right, what else can be, be used for? It can be used for teaching you algorithms and data structures. Now, when I was learning, uh, when I was studying for USICO, and I wanted to learn a new algorithm or data structure, I was on my own. I didn't really have any coaches. I didn't have anyone. And so I was trying to learn algorithms by myself. And it was, like, obviously, I'd go for the typical online websites, like Geeks for Geeks. There were some Code Forces blogs, some YouTube videos. It w they were good, and they would give me a nice starting point. But, and obviously, YouTube videos were better than blogs, at least for me. Um, but I couldn't really ask follow-up questions. I couldn't really interact. And that really made it difficult for me to learn. But with ChatGPT, you can definitely ask questions and interact and do all those sort of stuff. So let's say I want to learn about prefix sums. I can say ChatGPT, teach me about prefix sums. Bam, it teaches you all about prefix sums. Now, obviously, this might be something similar to something you can just get on a website. But the beauty that ChatGPT adds is that you can ask follow-up questions. So each prefix i represents the sum of all the elements for index i to a, uh, or for index 0 to i. Or you can calculate them from i to j using this formula, prefix j minus prefix i plus array i. Obviously, I would actually recommend here using, uh, what's it called? Prefix j minus prefix i minus one, but this gives you an edge case where when i is zero, you need to put an f statement for this. Um, when i is zero, it's just this. So anyways, up to you. This is like a nicer code actually with no if statement. So it really depends what you're looking for. Um, actually one base index just for prefix them. So I can use the code that I wrote. That's, a, that's actually a side note. Um, okay, so we're talking about prefix sums, and let's say we have a follow-up question. Why does the formula work? So I copy the formula, I ask them why it works, and now 
It's explaining to me why it works in detail. Cool. Let's see, I have another follow-up question. I ask it, why does this line work? What does this line, does this line do? Cool, it explains it to me. So it can be used as an interactive tool to teach you different algorithms and data structures. Now, the one thing it probably can't do as well is teach you the problem solving skills you need to solve problems, just because it doesn't know those skills itself, right? It can't solve the harder problems. But in terms of learning standard algorithms and data structures, it's pretty good. And in terms of explaining lines of code to you, especially lines of code that are doing standard stuff like this, it's also pretty good. So hope this video was informative for you. If you liked it, please hit the like button down below and don't forget to subscribe. I'm trying to get the 3000 subscribers We're almost there. So if you could join me in that and help me out, I'd be really appreciative. That's all I have for you. So have a great day. Bye.